Hello everybody, and welcome to our training of good manufacturing practices. Understanding and implementing GMPs in a food manufacturing facility, will help to prevent situations which could lead to customer illness and, or even death. So, let's talk about GMPs. The GMPs, or Good Manufacturing Practices, are practices that help to ensure, food is produced in a clean and safe environment. GMPs are practices to obtain safe and quality products. And what is considered a safe product? A safe product, is a product that is not going to cause any harm to the consumers, when the food is prepared, and or eaten according to its intended use. Now, what we have here is a complete list of the current good manufacturing practices required in a food manufacturing facility. Personnel. Plan and grounds. Sanitary operations. Sanitary facilities and controls. Equipment and utensils. Processes and controls. Warehousing and distribution, and. Defect action levels. Today, we will only be focusing on the GMP's rules, that are within your control to manage. Personnel practices and general requirements. Personal hygiene. Clothing and personal equipment. Personnel practices. Disease control. Cleaning and sanitation, and. Pest control. GMPs are the foundation of the food safety management system. GMPs are the basics we need to know and perform, to keep the food products free of adulteration. The aim of good manufacturing practices, is to protect the product from any microbial, chemical, or physical hazards that may cause it to become unsafe or unfit for purpose. The GMPs are mandatory for everyone working in a food manufacturing facility. Is everyone's responsibility, to guarantee that products are produced in a clean and safe environment, in order to prevent contamination of the food. All employees, contractors, and visitors will need to comply with GMPs. Okay, let's talk about the personal hygiene. Germs are present on human skin, hair, under fingernails, on dirty clothes, and in the mouth and nose. The company personal hygiene practices are an important way to reduce the risk of contamination. As I mentioned before, whether our employees or not, everyone should comply with the following practices that help to minimize bacterial contamination. Daily showers or bathing. Change into clean clothes. Trim and clean fingernails. Shave or wash the beard and wear a mask. And have a good dental hygiene. The hands are the major source of contact between food and food industry workers. Here is the correct procedure to wash our hands. First, wet your hands with hot water. Apply enough soap. Rub hands together. Then, scrub hands in between fingers for 20 seconds. Rinse off the soap with hot water. And finally, dry hands with a clean paper towel. Hands, with or without gloves, must be washed at all times. Immediately before starting work. Before handling food products. Immediately before manipulating packing material. After eating, drinking, and smoking. After using the restroom. After touching the face, hair, nose, or corporal fluids. After touching or picking up garbage, waste, or items from the floor. And, after any cleaning activities. And remember, the use of hand sanitizer shall never replace adequate hand washing procedure. Food handlers must wear approved, hygienic uniforms, these are generally supplied and laundered by the company. Clean, hygienic uniforms reduce the risk of contamination from bacteria. Uniforms must be kept clean and in good repair. A clean uniform should be worn each day and changed during the day if it becomes excessively soiled. Clothing may not have sequins, glitter, or other decorations. Any decorations may fall into product or packaging. No open toe shoes shall be worn in production area or warehouses. Hair must be kept clean. Hairnets and beard nets are required for all employees, contractors, and visitors entering the production area. All hair and ears must be enclosed in a hairnet. Replace hairnets as required if they are soiled or damaged. Gloves must be in good condition and clean, and must be changed frequently to prevent cross-contact and cross-contamination. To help prevent contamination, all personnel must comply with the following. Smoking is not allowed in a food manufacturing facility. Eating, drinking, or chewing gum or tobacco is prohibited in production area and warehouses, use only designated areas, or if required to taste products. 
Do not place pencils, pens, or cigarettes behind the ears. Rings, watches, earrings, facial piercings, or any other jewelry must not be worn in food manufacturing facilities. Do not wear false eyelashes, fingernails, nail polish. Do not carry objects above the belt or waistline such as pens, flashlights, or thermometers. Electronic equipment is prohibited in production areas. Do not use cell phones, iPods, or headphones. Again, food and beverages are prohibited in storages and production areas. Use designated areas only. Food and drinks are potential contaminants and can attract pests. There is a saying, everything has a place and everything in its place. Get into the habit of cleaning as you go. It is important to keep the facility in a clean, tidy, and orderly condition. This will also help to keep the workplace safe. Place the trash in the bin and clean up after any spills as they occur. Do not allow rubbish to build up in any area of the facility, as it provides conditions for bacteria to grow, and creates unpleasant, and unsafe working environment. Infected food handlers can contaminate food, and cause food poisoning outbreaks. For this reason, all employees are required to report to the supervisor when they have any illness prior to commencing work. It might not be necessary to send an employee home, but it might be necessary to send this employee work somewhere else, where there is not going to come in direct contact with food. Also, if the employee has any minor cuts, or abrasions on the hands, the employee must make sure the wounds are clean, and covered with a blue metal detectable band-aid. And gloves must be worn to cover the band-aid. Any product, raw material, or food contact packaging material, that have been dropped on the floor, must be disposed of as waste. No matter how clean it appears to be, there is always a risk of contamination. Avoid transferring tools and equipment from one area to another, as they can be source of cross-contamination. Implement color coding program if possible. There are two methods used for cleaning and sanitizing in food facilities, the CIP or cleaning in place, where cleaning solutions are circulated by pumps for a set period. The CIP is an automated system for cleaning and sanitizing large equipment such as tanks and pasteurizers. And manual cleaning, where cleaning solutions are manually applied, and equipment is scrubbed by hand. Remember that all cleaning activities should be documented in cleaning checklists or forms. Cleaning and sanitation are two different activities. Cleaning, is the process of removing all physical matter from equipment and surfaces, to remove food and other types of soil or dirt from surfaces. And sanitation, is the process of killing harmful germs you cannot see, that resides on equipment and surfaces. Employees shall keep their work area and equipment always clean and sanitized, areas such as floors, drains, walls, tables, tools and conveyors. Only approved chemicals and approved cleaning tools should be used. And always place utensils and chemicals in its designated area. All chemical products, sanitizers, cleaners, lubricants and solvents, shall have a label that clearly identifies the content in the container. It is not acceptable to have containers without a label and make sure to keep updated SDS on file. Pests are a source of both microbial and physical contamination. Is the employee responsibility, to ensure all doors remain shut when not in use. Any signs of pest activity must be reported to the supervisor. Information about pest sightings will be passed on to the pest control contractor. If all the practices we talked about, are not well implemented, it can cause outbreaks and get people very sick and die and the company can face legal consequences including costly fines and, if the outbreak has devastating effect, possible shutdown. GMPs are applied in the United States by the Food and Drug Administration. Refer to the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 21, Part 117, Subpart B. Congratulations! You have now concluded our Good Manufacturing Practices training. Thank you! And if you enjoyed our video please give us a like, and subscribe to our channel to check for the upcoming videos.